All right, so good news today. We're going to do section 1.5. Again, a lot of 1.5 is going to be reviews, probably stuff you've seen before. Uh, if you were here on Tuesday, which I think everybody here was, if you weren't, I got a syllabus for you to see me after class. Uh, but if you were here on Tuesday, then we're going to use most of the same skills for today's first section as we did then. So what we are going to do today in section 1.5 is we are going to solve Okay, so we solved the last time, and what we solved in our first section was linear equations. What we're going to solve this time is linear inequalities. So in case you're not familiar, again, I try not to assume too many things. In case you're not familiar with what an inequality is, when there was an equal sign, we said that was an equation. Inequality signs are these signs right here. They go like this. We've got this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay. These are like mouths. They're hungry mouths. Does anyone know what this symbol right here is telling you? Okay. This is the top part is less than, and then this little bar underneath means also equal. Okay. So this is less than or equal. You don't have to know this, but this is fun trivia to share with friends at parties over the weekend. It's called a weak inequality because you got a choice. Okay, so mathematicians call that a weak inequality. This one, then, if that's less than or equal to, this one is yep, great. Just want to make sure we're familiar with the signs. And then without the little bar at the bro at the bottom, this one is what? Less than this one is greater than. So these would be called mathematically. Again, you don't need to know this. I'm never going to quiz you on it, but it's fun to know. Uh, those are called strong inequalities because there's no choice. They're telling you exactly what's going on. So before we talk about solving linear inequalities, I want to talk about how we're going to notate our answers. So this is the part of the day that I'm assuming you probably haven't seen. So if you have, even better. But what I want to show you is how, uh, not just in this class, again, I told you that one of the things I'm trying to do is I'm trying to prepare you for college algebra, because I assume that's where you're all going uh, after this. This is how you'll write your answers to inequalities and, uh, and, and all sorts of things that we do in college algebra. We use this almost from day one in that class. So what we're going to talk about is how to write our inequalities in terms of what's called interval notation. So I'm going to write a few inequalities on the board. Uh, these are going to be examples. So after each inequality, if you want to leave three or four or five lines, so we can do what we need to do for each of them afterward. So these are just going to be the examples we start off with. The first inequality is going to look like this. Negative six is less than X is less than or equal to 14. So I've got what's called a betweenness inequality. It's saying my X's are going to be between those values. We always read our inequalities from the perspective of the X. So what this is saying is X is greater than negative six at the same time that X is less than or equal to 14. I'm reading it from the interior perspective of the X. Another one is zero is less than or equal to X is less than nine. I'm going to try to squeeze in two more inequality examples. X is greater than or equal to two. And my last example, and then I have a couple more after this, is x is greater than six. And I think we're still on the screen. We're doing good. Give you a moment. You're just writing those down. You're not doing anything with them yet because I haven't told you what to do. Now, this next part that we're going to go through and do for each of these inequalities, I do assume you have seen this at some point in some introductory algebra class or arithmetic class. I'm going to draw a picture for each of these. And the reason I want to draw a picture is I want to give you the ability, because I'm assuming you're learning this. I want to give you the ability as you're doing your homework or if you're panicking on the test to be able to have a picture to write down the interval notation. Okay, so that's the purpose of this. So I'm going to draw pictures for our examples. When we are solving our inequalities, I'm not going to draw pictures for all of them. Okay, but you are welcome to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a number line. I'm just going to stop my arrows. Now, my class yesterday, I just want to make sure that, that uh, some of the questions they asked, 
on the number line, if this represents my numbers, which way on the number line do numbers get bigger? To the left or to the right? Which way do they get bigger? Yeah. To the right. And they get smaller the further to the left you go. Fantastic. That's good to know. That'll be handy later today as well. Okay, so on this inequality, I have two values that are very important. What are those two values that are important? 14 and negative 6. So they're going to go in this order right here because you just told me the values get bigger the further to the, the further to the right that I go. So you will never put the 14 on the left side of the negative 6. It will always go on the right side. Now, when I graph things on the number line, I use shading to denote the values that, that are represented here by this inequality. So where am I going to shade on this? Where are the values between negative 6 and 14? In between, yeah, in the middle. Yeah, it's a crazy question, first, where I don't understand it. So here we go, right here. Woo. So I'm just trying to draw on some of your previous introductory or uh, arithmetic uh, knowledge that you have. So if you don't have that knowledge, then you're, you're learning on the fly here. Because of this symbol, this is uh, because this is a one of the strict uh, inequalities. It's just a, a less than symbol. What am I going to put at the negative six? Does anybody know my choices? Does anyone remember what my choices are? Either an open circle or a filled in circle. Exactly. Thank you. What? Which one's going to be appropriate for this side right here? The open one or the filled in one? The open. What the open means is that's the end point, but it's it's just the boundary that point's not part of my interval but i need a way to denote that all the all the values really really close to negative six are part of this uh part of this interval so that's where we're going to tether the end on this side what am i going to put right here a closed circle because this one has the equality and so the equals means that's part of my that's part of my answer okay so i'm going to close and i'm going to fill it in right there please do me this favor Real quick, keep your number line drawing for this next little boy. What are the values that are important on my number line? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you're welcome to fill in other values, but I'm a minimalist, so I'm just putting in the ones that are part of this problem. I'm hoping that everybody shaded in between. And then what am I going to put at the zero end of this one? Mm -hmm. Closed or a filled in circle, either word's appropriate. And then what am I going to put at the nine end? An open circle. Great, you guys are doing fantastic. I appreciate your help. So these ones, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the next one. Again, you're you may be working ahead. I'm assuming you've seen stuff like this. So I'm hoping this is not the mystery. Now this one's a little different. I'm only given one endpoint of this one. So what's the value that matters to me on this interval right here? Two. two. Okay, I'm just gonna put the two right here in the middle, doesn't matter. Now this is saying my missing values, the X's, the things that I don't know, my answers, they are bigger than or equal to, but they're bigger than two. Everything is bigger than two. So if everything is bigger than two, am I going to shade to the left or am I going to shade to the right on this? To the right. To the right. Yeah, you already answered that question earlier. I'm going to I'm going to shade the arrow just so that we know that we keep going with that. Because I'm not given a stopping point. Does that seem reasonable? We're not given a stopping point. That's why I shaded the arrow. What am I going to put at the two? You guys are doing fantastic. I appreciate it. Go ahead and graph that last one, x is greater than six, and then we're going to make the transition to what I want to talk about, which is interval notation. It only starts costing you money next week, so you'll be taxed. Okay. Once again, the value that matters is six. Thank you for answering my questions, even if they are uh, very obvious. 
This one says the X's are greater than, meaning they're bigger than six. So I'm going to shave left or right. Okay. And this time, what am I going to put at the six end of this interval? So this is not, I'm, I'm again, I'm hoping that that's not new and mysterious to you. The reason I'm drawing the pictures is I find it helps the students, if you're learning this for the first time, to understand interval notation. So when we write our solutions to solving linear inequalities, we're going to write them in interval notation. And here's the general format for interval notation. In interval notation, what you're going to do is on the left, you're going to have a lower value. Then you're going to put a comma. And then you're going to have, uh, you're going to have an upper value. And on each side of the interval to denote whether there is equality or not, I'm just going to do an example of each. If there is an equal sign, you use a bracket. Okay, a bracket represents equal. So I'm going to put a little asterisk here so that stands out a little bit. A bracket represents equal. And then in interval notation, a parenthesis represents no equal. There's no equal sign. So a bracket is like the filled in circle, the parenthesis is like the open circle. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through each of these four intervals. Uh, we're going to alternate. I'm going to start and we're going to write them in interval notation. Then I've got a couple more examples and then we'll keep practicing this today because that's how we're going to write the answers to all of our inequalities is in interval notation. Okay, so on this problem right here, again, the purpose of the graph is so that you have a visual going forward. If you don't want to draw the graph, if this clicks in your brain, great. If it's going to take you a little longer, that's fine. Graph until you don't need to anymore. What is the lower value? What's the lowest end of this interval? Negative six. What is the highest end of this interval? What's the highest value? 14. 14. Great. What am I going to put at the negative six end of this interval? Why am I going to put a parenthesis at the negative six end of this interval? There's no equals. Okay? I'm just getting you to talk through this so that hopefully you'll remember it when we're not together. I'm going to put a parenthesis there because there's no equal. It's the same thing as an open circle. What am I going to put at the 14 end of this interval? Why am I putting a bracket at this end of the interval? Because there's an equal sign. Yes. Okay, so a bracket. There you go. There's our interval. That represents the set of numbers that would be the solution there. Please write the next one in interval notation for me. I know a couple of people watching late. Is everyone caught up with your writing? Do you want to be writing? Well, if you miss anything, the video has been posted a few minutes after we get out of class, so you can rewatch as much or as little as you want. What's the low bound or the lower limit or the lower value of this interval? Yeah. What's the upper value? Yeah. Right. What am I going to put at the zero end? Yeah. Why am I putting a bracket? Yeah. Just that easy. Great. What am I going to put at the nine side? Yeah. And that's because there's no equal. So we catch it on. We doing all right. Okay. If you can catch on to this now, I cannot stress to you how much better your life will be in college algebra because we use interval notation for everything, because we in that class, we're going to look at graphs of different what's called functions. We'll talk about those a little later in this in this semester. And we so if you can quickly and easily write things in interval notation, it's going to make your life great. Okay, so now what happens? What do I need to do if there's not a, a second side? Okay, so on this one, looking at the picture, the number two, all of my values are bigger than two. So does that make two the lower bound or the upper bound? It's the lowest value, right? Everything else is bigger. Does that make sense? So two is the lower end of this interval. Now, I need a way to communicate to people that there is no upper value. Goes forever. Infinity. infinity, yes. And the way we write infinity in algebra is not like the car symbol. It's like an eight that's been out too late on Friday and has passed out. Okay, so we're going to use infinity symbol like that. Now, make note to yourself, please. Infinity is not a destination. It's a direction. You never get to infinity. Okay, there's always another number that can come after. 
So this is just telling anybody who's reading this the direction that the numbers are going, that they're getting bigger forever. Because of that, whenever you use an infinity, because you cannot get to infinity, you always, every time, no matter what, use a parenthesis. So always use a parenthesis at the infinity end of your interval. Now, the two end, that matters on the sign. So what am I going to put at the two end of this particular interval? Because of the equals up here, I'm going to put a bracket. I just want to reiterate, because I don't want to lose anybody on this little point. We always use a parenthesis at infinity, no matter what the sign is. Please put that last one, x is greater than six. Please write that in interval notation for me. Here's my picture. X is greater than six. That means all of my values are bigger than six. So that makes six what? The lower or the upper? Lower. The lower. Is everyone doing okay? Everyone see why that's the lower? Yeah. What am I going to put out the other side? It never stops. So I'm going to put an infinity. At the sixth side of this one, what am I going to put? Bracket or parenthesis? Because of the sign. What am I going to put at the infinity side? Because that's what you always do for infinity. Yes, great. All right, just a couple more examples, and then we'll do some solving of linear inequalities, which is what you paid your money for today. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna graph this one. I'm pretty sure everyone here is catching on. Hopefully, if you're not, see me after class. Let's talk about let's talk about this. So this is x is less than negative one. All of my numbers are less than or below negative one. So the value that matters is negative one. This time, though, where, where am I shading? If everything's less than, I'm shading to the left. Ooh. What am I going to put at the negative one side of this? I graph this, then we'll talk about, I promised you at the end of class last time, I would teach you the mathematical way to write all real numbers. And so that's going to be the last interval that we, that we talk about. So x is less than or equal to 10. 10 is the value that matters. It's less than, so I'm going to shade left. Yes, great. And then this time at the 10, I'm going to put, because of the equals, build in circle, fantastic. All real numbers, I didn't ask you to graph it, and maybe you worked ahead and you did, but if it's all real numbers, then I'm just going to shade everything. So let's finish up and we're gonna we're gonna write the intervals for these three. So now I've got my values that I'm interested in, my x's, they are less than negative one. So that makes the negative one. Is that the lower end or is that the upper end of the interval? Oh, it's the upper end this time. Great. <coughs> Hypothesis. I haven't seen this before. Since I'm going to the left and it never stops, what am I gonna put right here? Okay, infinity very close. Okay, that would have been what I would said would have said too. But I want to let everybody know that it's going smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's going to be a negative infinity. Okay. Well, negative infinity, similar concept to infinity. What am I going to put every time, no matter what, always on this side of the interval? And in this particular problem, because I did not have an equal sign, parenthesis. So real quick. X is less than or equal to 10, write that in interval notation. 
If you if you want to take a stab at all real numbers, that's fine. It's not required. We're going to do that one together in just a minute. So once again, you can see from the picture that the 10 is the upper end of the interval. We put a negative infinity on this side because it never stops going left. So on this side, parenthesis or bracket, because it's infinity. At this side, parenthesis or bracket, because of the equal. Anyone want to take a stab at all real numbers? How do you think you're going to write that in interval notation? Yeah, it never stops going in either direction. There's no upper or lower bound on this one. So you're going to do negative infinity on the lower bound because it never stops getting smaller. And you're going to do positive infinity, infinity on the upper bound because it never stops getting bigger. Parentheses on both ends. So that's how you write mathematically uh, when you end up with something that the answer is all real numbers. Okay, so I have finally fulfilled my promise to you. I know you are waiting expectantly all Wednesday and Thursday morning for that answer. So there it is. Before we move on, so I don't want to go too quick if I don't, um, if I shouldn't. Questions about interval notation? Doing okay so far? Well, I'm expecting we solved equations. My thought was that you've seen equations before because I know you've been algebraic to death in your school life. You've probably solved inequalities, but I don't want to assume too much just in case you haven't. I'm going to start right at the beginning and then we'll, we'll do several examples. Once you know how to solve an equation though, there's only one little bit of information that you need to know that's different about solving an inequality. So we're gonna start with the most basic uh, inequality just to make sure we're all on the same page and we're, we're writing our answer, answers in interval notation. So for instance, if I have X minus eight is let's say greater than or equal to four. Okay, we're gonna solve that. X minus eight is greater than or equal to four. Same place we started solving equations. Review question from last time. If I'm going to solve this for x, what do I have to move? Eight. Eight. How am I going to move it? Positive eight. You're doing the reverse. This says we're subtracting eight. What's the reverse of subtracting eight? We're going to add it. There you go. Beautiful. Well said. So on the left, the eights cancel. I have x. I've got a greater than or equal to four plus eight is 12. And that's my answer. Any value that I would pick that is bigger than or equal to 12 is a solution to that. Okay, there's more than one answer. That's why we write these in interval notation. So if you need to draw a graph, fantastic. I'm not going to. So if all of my answers are bigger than 12, everything is bigger than 12. Does that mean 12 is the lowest value or the highest value? Mm -hmm. Lowest, great. So infinity, always a parenthesis of infinity. What am I going to put at the 12 side of this? Great. Here's one for you, nice, quick, relaxing one. Uh, let's do this. X plus five is less than negative six. All right, what has to move on this? The five, how am I going to move it? I'm going to subtract five because this is X. I'm adding five, so the reverse is to subtract. The fives cancel. I have X. I have a less than, negative six, negative five. That's negative 11. Great. If this says all of my answers, all of my values are below negative 11, everything is less than negative 11, does that make the negative 11 the lower end or the upper end of this interval? It's the upper end if everything's below it. So a negative infinity. By the way, interval notation is very important. Go in number order. Please do not. This is this is wrong. There will be a deduction if you do negative eleven, negative infinity. Okay, that's wrong. Okay, you're 
the, the going out of number order, and that's uh, that's part of our interval notation. I always put a parenthesis at the negative infinity, and then at the negative eleven, I'm going to put. Wait. Okay. So now let's take the next step. Here is the one difference. I'm going to do a demonstration. If I had any sort of sound effects, they would be great and grand. But I need to know how to spell. There we go. Woo! Demonstration. Okay, I want to demonstrate for you the situation that we have one thing to remember solving for an inequality. So we're going to start out with a true statement. Negative four is less than four. Would everyone agree that this is a true statement? Negative four is less than four. You with me? Okay, that's true. So here's what I'm going to do to that true statement. I'm going to do two things, and we're going to see what happens. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by, let's just say, six. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this by six. When I multiply the left side by six, what do I get on the left side? Yep. When I multiply the right side by six, what do I get on the right side? And here's my question. I know you know how to multiply, so that wasn't the real thing. Does the same sign still fit? Do I still have a true statement? Yes. Okay. So it's still true. Same sign. I'm sure if you've seen, if you know what's coming up, you know what I'm going to do next. Okay. So sorry, I'm not meaning to bore you. Just want to make sure I'm thorough. Everybody's going the same place. We're going to multiply this by a negative six on both sides, and we're going to see what happens. And this is going to answer the why we do what we do when we're solving inequalities. So when I multiply the left by negative six, what do I get on the left now? That negative times a negative is a positive 24. When I multiply the right by negative six, I get negative 24. So here's the big question. Does the same sign still fit? No. no, what do I have to do to make a true statement? Okay, we have to flip the inequality. So here's the one thing to remember. I'm just going to state it out. I'm just going to, I'm just going to write as a statement what I just demonstrated right there. And it goes like this. If you multiply or divide, I know I didn't divide over there, but multiplication and division are related operations. If you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative, I'm going to underline the word negative because that's the important word here. Doesn't matter about positive. But over here, when we multiply both sides by a positive, I didn't have to do anything to the inequality. If I multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative, I must let an inequality. Okay, once you're done writing that, I'm going to just give you one example. You're going to do this. This is uh, the, the simplest type of example. Remember, simple doesn't always mean easy, so I'm not trying to be condescending, but the, the simple just means that there's only one step. I want you to do this. I want you to write your answer in interval notation. So solve this. Let's say that we have negative 5x is less than or equal to 40. Solve that. Write your answer in interval notation. Okay, so negative 5x is less than or equal to 40. What do I have to move on this problem? The negative 5, I'm, how am I going to move it? 
So doing the reverse, I'm going to divide by negative five. Fantastic. So here's the key. What am I dividing by? A negative five. Okay, so it's negative. Because I'm dividing by a negative, I have to flip my inequality sign. Okay, I'm changing the relationship between the values. So a negative divided by a negative is a positive x. 40 divided by negative 5 is negative 8. And then to make the, to make the relationship stay, instead of a less than or equal to, it's a greater than or equal to. I have to flip the sign. Didn't know to do that on this one because this is your first time. Totally okay. We're going to do five or six or seven more examples to finish out this uh, to finish out this section. So you're going to get your chance to, to to perfect this. So this says all of my values are bigger than or equal to eight. Everything is bigger than is bigger than or equal to negative eight. Everything is bigger than negative eight. So is that negative eight the lower end of the interval or the upper end of the interval? Negative eight is the lower end. Infinity is going to be the upper. Remember, if you are having trouble seeing that, draw a picture. That's very helpful. That way, you know if you're shading left or right because the infinity goes the direction you're shading. Okay, so there's the bracket at this end because there's equality. Put a parenthesis at this end because that's what you always do at infinity, and we're done. All right, here's my next example. I'm going to do one, you're going to do one. So here's mine. Let's say that I have negative 3x. Uh, plus 14 is less than, and let's go something like uh, uh, negative 21. No, that's not going to be good. Let's do negative 17. I just, we could have done the other one. I just, I'm feeling lazy today. I want the numbers to work out. Okay. So again, all the skills that you developed and were reminded of as far as solving in the last section are just as applicable now. There's nothing new except for if you multiply or divide by a negative, you flip the inequality sign. So what's the first thing that I have to do to both sides of this? Yeah, I got to get the X term alone. So I'm going to subtract the 14. That's a great idea. I still picked the bad value. So we're just going to work with it. It's okay. So I've got negative three X, my 14s cancel. Do I flip the sign when I subtract? No. no, trick question. Thank you for not falling for my deceit. And then negative 17 and negative 14 is negative 31. What's the second thing I have to do? Divide by negative three. I can't, uh, see, I can't talk and add, so we're gonna end up with a fraction here, but that's fine, fractions are fine. Okay, I divided by a negative. So that means what's my sign now? Greater than, got to flip that sign. And then a negative divided by a negative becomes a positive 31 over here. No common factor, I can't reduce that fraction. That's it. Once again, my solutions, my values are anything that's bigger than 31 over three. So if everything is bigger than 31 over three, is 31 over 3 the lowest part of the interval, or is it the upper part of the interval? The lower part? Okay. Asking that question. Oh, what's wrong? I thought you said the x. Oh, okay. The x, all of my x's, all of my values are bigger than 31 over 3. So I'll put a parenthesis here. The infinity part, we always put a parenthesis. Try this one. Seven minus two X is less than or equal to, let's go with something like 23.
7 minus 2x is less than or equal to 23. So what's the first thing that needs to be moved on that problem right there? 7. How am I going to move the 7? Subtract it. Negative 7. When I subtract the 7s and the 7s cancel, what's the term that's left on the left side? Yeah, don't forget that sign. Okay, that the sign always goes, or the, the sign of a term is always in front of it. Do I change the, the inequality when I subtract? Mm -hmm. 23 minus 7, was a 16? Mm -hmm. Second and last thing to do here is what? Great. And then you set the key word. We're dividing by a negative. So a negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a positive x. Since I divided by a negative, I have to flip that sign to greater than or equal to. And then 16 divided by negative 2 is a negative 8. We've done this a couple times already. All my values are bigger than negative eight. So that means negative eight is the lower end of the interval. And here's and infinity is everything that's bigger. Put a bracket at this end. I always put a parenthesis at the infinity end. Are we doing okay? We're going to the next step on the ladder then. Okay, here's my next problem right here. It's gonna look like this. Let's say that I have, uh, let's say I have three X plus nine is greater than five X uh, minus eight. Just giving you a second to write that down. We're going to work this one together. I'm also, I'm going to do this problem twice because I told you last time that my algebra teacher back in uh, 10th grade demanded X's on the left. So that's just my habit. I've been trained to do that. But I know some of you would say, hey, I'm going to put the 3x over on the right because it's going to give me a positive term and I avoid negatives. And I totally understand. And so I just want to show you that it doesn't matter. We're going to end up with the exact same answer either way we do the problem. So I'm going to do x's on the left because that's my uh, Pavlovi Pavlovian training right there. So I'm going to take the 5x. I'm going to bring it over to the left-hand side. How am I going to bring the 5x over to the left-hand side? Subtract it. 3x minus 5x is negative 2x. I've got a plus 9. I don't change the sign when I subtract. You've already answered that question a couple times for me. And then I have a negative 8 left on the right side. The next thing to move is that 9, because now I've got all my x's where I want them. How am I going to move the 9? Subtract it. Yes. I'm just asking you the questions that I'm hoping you get in the habit of asking yourself. And every problem is pretty much the same thing. So hopefully once you get in the habit of it, it's what you'll remember when you go to take the test in, a, in whenever that test is. So I have negative two X, the nines cancel. The sign does not change when you subtract. Negative eight and negative nine is negative 17. And last but not least, we're gonna divide both sides by negative two. That division steps always our last step. So I've got X, I've divided by a negative, okay? We're doing this over and over so that hopefully you remember when you divide by a negative, you flip that sign. And a negative 17 divided by negative two, if you wanna call that 8.5, that's fine. I'm just gonna leave it as positive 17 over two. All of my values are below 17 over two. Everything is less than 17 over two. So that means 17 over two is the upper value. So negative infinity, that's all the stuff below. Parentheses on each side. Now you don't have to write this next part down. Uh, I just want to do this just in case anybody is concerned. I don't want you to think you would get the problem wrong if you, if you put the X's on the right. And I also have one little point to make at the very end about writing stuff in interval notation. So just going to work through this quickly. If I move the three X to get the X's on the right, so that leaves me a nine, five X minus three X is two, a negative eight. Now I'm gonna add the eight to get it over there. Nine and eight is 17. I still haven't flipped the sign. And notice when I put the X's on the right, which is why some of you would do this, I have a positive two X. So I don't have to worry about flipping the sign. So I'll divide by two. When I divide by a positive, you don't flip the sign. And so this is 17 over two X. So the question is, do I have the same thing? Is this the same as that? And that's a great question. And remember, we always read our inequalities from the perspective of the X. Okay? To help you do this though, because I know my brain doesn't work that way either. I'm used to reading things from left to right. So what I would do if I were you, 
before I write this in interval notation, because I don't want you to accidentally make a mistake because you see a greater than here, what I would do is say, I'm going to flip the order so that my brain is reading it the way that I'm used to reading things. So I'm going to put the X over here, the 17 over 2 here, and then which way is the pointy part pointing at? The pointy part's pointing at the, the X. So the pointy part is pointing at the X. And you'll see that I've got the exact same thing that we had when we did it the other way. So it absolutely does not matter which way you put the X's. So you can do whatever you want with confidence. So here's a problem for you so that you can be confident while you're doing it. So let's try this. Let's say that you have uh, something like this. Um, let's go negative, negative 7x plus 8 is greater than or equal to, and let's go over here, negative 4x uh, minus 6. Solve that, write your answer in interval notation, please. I'm not going to do this problem both ways. So just remember, if you do it different than me, we will end up in the exact same place. So I'm going to put my x's on the left because that's my habit. I always do the same thing. So I'm going to take the negative 4x. I'm going to bring it over there by adding it. So negative 7x plus 4x, that's negative 3 of them. Then I plus 8. Adding does not change my sign, so it stays greater than or equal to. And then I have negative six on the other side. Is everyone following along? Am I losing anybody? Please don't let me lose you. Okay, so we're just we're just solving. The next thing we do when we come back for the next section in just a few minutes, we're going to apply solving to something, a new situation. So now I'm going to bring the eight over here by subtracting it. And I have negative three X, the eight cancel. Subtracting does not change my sign. Also, just a note, don't pre-change the sign. I know you see right here that it's a negative in front of the X and you're thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and flip the sign. Don't. Mistakes happen so often with students then reflipping the sign at the end of the problem. Wait until you actually do the multiplying or dividing by the negative. Negative 6, negative 8, negative 14. Divide both sides by the negative 3. Now I will flip the sign because I actually did the division less than or equal to negative. Divide by negative is positive and that does not reduce at all. Interval notation, all my values are less than or below 14 thirds. So that means I'm going to start off with a what is my lower bound. Does it equal? Right. I've got two more problems that you're going to do for me in, in this, and then we'll be done with section 1.5, and we're going to begin section 2.1 and get about halfway into that today. Uh, is part of what we're going to do. So here's your second to last linear inequality that you're going to do in class today. And it looks like this. So negative three and then some parentheses, x plus four and plus two is greater than or equal to seven minus x.
Yeah, we did all of 1.19 class. That was not before uh, just because of the service and everything. So we're going to do 1.5 today, and we're going to do about half to 2.1, and then next week we'll do a There's a couple of short sections in this week. All right, so we're relying on some of what we learned last time for this. So uh, hopefully you're remembering or we're able to look back in your notes. What's the first thing I need to do on this? Distribute. Yeah, I'm not doing any solving right now. I need to make this look a little neater. So I'm going to distribute this negative three. And the reason I chose this problem is I just want to make a point here. So negative three times X is negative three X. Then negative three times four is negative 12. First question, do I multiply the negative three times the two? No, I asked you that last time. So boring question. Second question is, do I change the sign? No, because I'm not solving. Okay, I'm not doing something to both sides. I'm just distributing. Okay, so the sign stays the same, 7 minus x. I'll collect those like terms now. So negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10. And I and just like I said with equations, this is as hard as an inequality gets. We just did two of these. All of them work the exact same way. Once you've done one of them, you've done all of them. I'm going to put x's on the left. I'm going to put my numbers on the right. And then I'm going to go ahead and divide. So I'm going to add x to both sides. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2x minus 10. Adding doesn't change the sign. And my x's cancel. I'm going to add 10 to both sides. Adding doesn't change the sign. And then I'll divide by negative two, and we are good as gold here. Oops, not equal. Sorry. I got to flip the sign because I divided by a negative. And then 17 divided by negative two is negative 17 over two, or negative 8.5 if you prefer that. All of my values are below negative 17 over two. So since they're below, that's a negative infinity and negative 17 over two. Here's our last problem. So if you've got any questions, anything you've got to get out off your, off your chest before we go to the next section, then that is great. And so this problem looks like, uh, looks like this. Um, I would like you to do uh, five minus two and then parentheses X minus four and then less than uh, 11 minus four X. Okay, so last problem. Again, I have a purpose for this problem. I mentioned this when we solved equations, so it's a similar thing I'm reminding you of. Remember your order of operations. If anyone here started off by doing five minus two and getting three, I understand me wanting to do that, but remember multiplying comes before subtraction in my order of operations. So I have to distribute first. So the five just stays five, and then the negative two times X is negative two X. The negative two times negative four is plus eight. 
and then 11 minus 4x over here. Then I have 5 plus 8 is 13. I'm going to get my x's on the left, my numbers on the right, and then divide. So I'm going to add 4x. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2x. Adding does not change the sign. And then I'm going to subtract 13, just about to the finish line. Subtracting does not change the sign. I'm dividing this time by a positive. So putting my x's on the left resulted in a positive, a positive coefficient. So I don't change that sign. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So my x's are less than negative 1. And so if all of my values are less than negative 1, that means negative infinity to negative 1, parentheses on both sides. Yes. Here? Only is a great question. Glad we can get some clarity. Only when you divide by a negative. Okay. With all the other problems, you're right. Every other one we've done, we divided by a negative two here. We divided by a negative three here. This one, the way I did it, since I put the X's on the left, I have a positive two. So you don't flip the sign when you divide by a positive. Great question. Good to get clarity on that. Any other questions? 